Hello and welcome back to Sprite Guard Plays Ollie Ollie 2. Welcome to Hollywood. Today we are heading into the first level of Pro Curse of the Aztec. So we are going to take a look at it. We need a score of 2 million points, a times 60 combo. We need to finish in a single combo and we need to grab relics and land a feeble grind to 360 inward heal flip. So a feeble grind, let's take a look, is... Uh, left plus the right bumper, and the 360 inward heel flip is, let's see, uh, three-quarter circle clockwise. All right, so we're going to need to hit left and the right bumper and then do a 360-degree clockwise circle, or rather a 270-degree clockwise circle. So let's start out just by getting a look at the course and trying to figure out what we can do. Uh, try and do the actually tricks that we intend to do. Looks like we have some long slopes here. And it looks like we have some slightly tricky jumps. And I keep doing that 540 uh, when I don't mean to and that is messing me up. So it looks like we have some opportunities to get some doubles, some tricks. We have a very tricky collectible there. So I think we need to kind of dial back what we're doing. Just focus, first of all, on fundamentals, something that I often talk about. And uh, that's easy to forget in these pro levels because you have much higher score uh, requirements than in the amateur levels. But you can often still meet them with really fundamentals-based runs. And of course, you don't get any points if you don't complete your combo. So let's see if we can do that. See if we can, you know, maybe throw some basic tricks in. Uh, but mostly just work on getting a high combo and uh, finishing it off with a perfect landing. Because that, at the very least, will get us one star. And we need lots of spins, lots of manuals, maybe some revert manuals, I don't know. Don't really know even yet how much we need to get that combo. But those are 2 million points, our times 60 combo, and our one big combo. So now we need to grab the relics and land the feeble grind to 360 inward heel flip. So for the trick, the first grind is several jumps down the way. So there's our feeble grind, and then we need to go clockwise. So that is something that is going to take a little bit of concentration. So that was a dolphin flip, so that is a 180 degree turn. So that was, I think, a 360. There's our 360 inward heel flip. There we go. So we managed to do that. So now we need to get those collectibles. And uh, it looks like we're going to have to do a pretty quick bunny hop to get this first one. We're just going to have to go past it a couple of times to even have a really good idea. There we go. Whoops. All right, so these spikes are pretty tall, and we're going to have to kind of figure out a way of uh, dealing with them. Looks like it is not going to be trivial to get over any of these. So what we want to do is we just want to go over this over and over and really try and develop a sense of the timing and spacing. Look for visual cues. See if there's anything that can tell us when to jump. Like here, it looks like we want to jump a little bit before the end of that uh, first grind. So let's take a look. Looks like just the tiniest bit before, and then bunny hop there. And then we need to probably flat land there, and then jump very quickly. And uh, I just noticed the top tip for this level is not very useful for this level. Uh, you don't actually need to mix up your tricks a lot. 
uh, you need to throw in a few extra different tricks. But you saw I got the 2 million points just by doing some really fundamental stuff, just by repeating some tricks. So I'm not sure if we need to do something really special here, or if we just need to time our jump very precisely. And so that's going to take probably a little bit of trial and error trying to figure that out. So jump a little bit early, but not too early. And then getting that, getting the timing for that bunny hop is something that is, you know, it's something that I can read it well enough to get it most of the time. So there's our flat land. So that actually has introduced a new problem. Uh, which is that if we jump at the right place to get over that spike, we're not guaranteed to actually land on the other collectible. And so now we need to figure out how are we going to approach that? How are we going to shorten our jump? And I think the thing to do is actually to manual there. And I think that, that what that will do is that will slow us down so that we'll do a shorter, um, more steeply arced jump. And hopefully we will still get the height that we need. And so now it's going to kind of be a grind just trying to get everything in a single run. And that can be, that can sometimes kind of be a discouraging part of a lot of these runs where you're just trying to do a bunch of things where no one of them is out of reach, but you aren't consistent enough in any of them uh, to do them all in a sequence. And that can be kind of one of the most discouraging sequences in a very hard game like this. And so it's important to kind of be aware of that and kind of be aware that it is something that you can overcome and that it's it's kind of it's a normal obstacle to run into especially at this point in a game. And so what I'm seeing is that uh, when I do the manual, I'm not getting the height that I need. And I don't know if that's because I'm jumping too early or too late. And I suspect that I'm jumping too early. But uh, too late is also a possibility. There I tried to delay it a little bit longer. And once again, didn't really quite make it. There we go. So that's what we need to do. It looks like we need to jump a little bit earlier than I had been jumping. I think one of one of the things that I find the most difficult in a game like this is when you have something that is just really very very difficult that comes after a bunch of things that are fairly difficult. And so the number of times that you get to actually practice the really difficult part is reduced by the number of times uh, that you retry each of the things that comes before it. And that's kind of why I started saying, you know, we don't make mistakes, we just get more practice. And what I mean by that is every part of this sequence that I'm doing here needs to be consistent. And until every part of this sequence is consistent, I'm not going to be able to do it. And so I have to practice every part of it and get every part of it down to the point that I can get lots and lots of attempts at the later parts of it. There we go. And so you get exactly as much practice as you need in a game like this because you just keep doing things over and over and over until you can do them consistently.
And sometimes you get you get lucky and you get a little bit less practice than you think you need. But really what you need is to get consistent enough that you have a good enough chance of getting through a sequence that it eventually happens in a reasonable amount of time. There's a lot of randomness in the human condition in just trying to do things with your hands. There's a lot of noise that's going to come through your hands and distort what you're trying to do. And you just have to get, you know, through practice and concentration, get the amount of variance down low enough that it's like trying to roll all sixes on a handful of dice. And you just have to get it so that, you know, it becomes like trying to flip all heads on a bunch of coins, you know. Get the variance down to the point where it won't take you too many tries before the luck works in your favor. And the more practice and the more concentration you put into it, the less variance you'll have and the you know the more likely you will be to get through a sequence until it becomes more like the mistakes you make become the the rarer occurrence and it starts being you know how many times do you do it before you make a mistake and so you know that that can come over hundreds or even thousands of hours depending on what it is you're doing a game like this i've been playing it for a few hundred hours and I'm getting to the point where I can do most of the things. There are still things that are too difficult. There are games that I talk about on this channel that I have that I have watched people play that take thousands of hours. There are games that I play where I know that it will take me thousands of hours to get to the point where I'm playing at the level that I want to be playing. And so it really just sometimes comes down to the perseverance of sticking with it, of practicing that much, of concentrating that much. And uh, and I love the way that games can kind of open my eyes to being able to see that. So that is the very first Curse of the Aztec level in Pro Oli Oli 2, Welcome to Hollywood. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great rest of your day.